was used or not. Have you ever put a hint in a query and when you put it, it didn't work? Well, if they want to use a query, they can tell you that it worked or not. The only thing they will not tell you is not. But it will tell you if it happens or not. The WASU053 also has a very long list of all the fixed controls, as, as Carlos showed you. Anybody care to guess how many fixed controls are in 11203? Hmm? 653. That is how many fixes can affect your uh, your query. Now, how many of you believe that if you put optimize the features and F equals this, I'm going to get exactly the same uh, optimizer that I got on that other version. So I'm in 11.203 and I put uh, 11.202 and I'm going to get the same execute the same optimizer that was in 11.203. How many believe that? Of course I'm saying this because it's not. The, um, there are many fixes in the optimizer that are not controlled by fix control. The reason behind that is because many of these are wrong result box, for example, of transformations that were not supposed to be done, but in that version were allowed, or they shouldn't have. So there is a fix. That fix came into the new version, and then that, uh, yeah, no that is not controlled by the by the parameter. So the end result is that when you try to force the same execution that you had in the old one, it doesn't. Carlos, your microphone is on. I know. <laughs> okay, so let's continue here. So, uh, so we cover statistics and we cover 10053. So that is kind of a heavy general statistics. Now let's, let's talk about ACS and SQL Plan Management so you get to understand how it works. And we will do some some demos and maybe a quick. Okay, anyway. So moving to adaptive course of share, 11G. Uh, this morning I was asking who was on 11G. So you're on 11G you are using adaptive course of sharing. So let's understand how it works. That is part of the SQL Tuning Workshop 2. That is a chapter 03. So I already opened those two PowerPoints. A adaptive course of sharing inside a SQL Tuning Workshop 2, and the same for the labs. So in this case, we will do the lab. So I have a setup. So the first thing I do here, I execute my setup. And it's going to say, it's going to delete SQL Plan Management. It says, uh, it's going to create a user. I already have the user, so we'll try to reproduce the user. Regenerate the user, which is fine. Doing the deletes. It's recreating those objects. It's going to take a moment, which is fine. I just let it run. And I will start with the PowerPoint. So, what is that we have here? What is this? Okay, this is the SQL engine. And when we have the CDO, let me try to explain this. Any application that we have, we issue SQL statements one after the next. Every single SQL statement it goes through the SQL compiler. And inside the SQL compiler, we have this part here, which is the cost based optimizer. The cost based optimizer is reading data from the data dictionary. It's going, to, it's going to perform some query transformations. It's going to use the costing engine, and it's going to generate execution plans. Those execution plans, they come in the shape of a cursor, and we populate the cursor in memory. So we put the cursor in memory. We may have for the same SQL multiple uh, child cursors, it's fine. We execute one. The SQL, once it's executed, it uh, returns some results to the application. The application issues the next SQL, and it goes on and on. That is basically the cycle. So far, so good. No, no, no magic. And we, under, we understand this, right? OK, so what is the question here? Do we want to share, or we don't want to share? We're talking this one here. 
So what are the pros and cons of sharing, of sharing courses here? Mm -hmm. If we share, if we share, that means if we if we have these courses here and we share those courses, we are going to save cycles here. We're going to save CPU, right? Mm -hmm. As a pro, as a con, we're going to be using memory here. So it's a trade-off. We we're using that memory that we have as the CPU here, but, but also in the memory is going to be a, a pro. Because if we don't share and we have many users trying to execute what it seems to be the same SQL or we just a slightly different literal, if we don't share, we have multiple courses here, one for each SQL, right? If we share, we, we reduce the footprint here, right? So it, it looks like sharing is a good idea. Why? Because we're going to save cycles here, that means less CPU, and we're going to save space here, that means less memory. But it has to have a cost. Go ahead. That is correct. We have to pay a price. So what, what, is the, what are the cons? Okay, if we always share and we're using my variables, we have less memory footprint, which is good. We have less CPU use, which is good. But we, this is the price that we pay. We will have suboptimal plans when we use different binds and of course the data is skewed because if the data is not skewed, we're fine. So that means we're going to affect the performance. If we do not share, that means if we use middles, we get better plans, but we need more memory and we need more CPU. So it's always a trade-off. With, with tuning, it, it always works, works like this. You gain something here, you have to pay something here, always. It's always like that. Now, the question is, can we just get the best of both? That means, can we get these two and this one? That is, that is what we want. We want the best of this side and the best of this side. Unfortunately, it's not, it's not totally possible. Well, if we want to improve the never share, so that means if we are here using literals, if we want to improve this side, well, we may use, we may rewrite the application to use binds. In that case, we go from one side to the other. We go from here to here. We go from one extreme to the other, which is not that good internally. If we use course of sharing force or similar, remember similar is be supported. If we use course of sharing force, eh, we may have some issues, right? Because now we have the binds, we have the line picking, we have the histograms, we are back to where we were before. And keep in mind, using force is basically a binary solution to an application that otherwise would be non-scalable. So when you are here, you can rewrite the application, or you can force course of shape. And still, that is not the full solution. When you are always shared, with 99, we introduce this bind picking. And remember, I mentioned bind picking together with the histograms, together with the first execution, you may have a good plan the first time, but subsequent execution not necessarily. So we know uh, about those those uh, unstable plans, <coughs> especially when you have this kind of uh, situations when you have a column range and a value, regardless if the value uh, has a histogram or not, that is an issue. Or when you have column equals bind variable and you have a histogram, that is an issue. So how do we how do we handle values at our range? That's another open question that we have. So we have some issues that we have to to somehow to take care of. So how do we deal with this? Well, the, the right way to do it is to rewrite the application, but put in this way. If 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 I have unlimited resources, I'd rather rewrite my application this way. If the data in that column is not skewed, that means I do not need a histogram. I wouldn't put a histogram. I would have a bind. Perfect, I would have a bind. No histogram, no issue. Now, if the data in that column is skewed, I have two options. When the number of listing values is small, then I will use a literal. I wouldn't have course of sharing force. I wouldn't. I would just leave the literal. And I will collect histograms on that column. And if the number of listing values is large, then I would treat it this way. Use bind, no history. 
but it, that would be more scalable, but it requires to rewrite your application. Why is more scalable? Because in cases where it matters, I mean, when you have a, the data is skewed and the number of listing values is small, in other words, you have a frequency histogram, you will have multiple versions of the SQL. Is that clear? One for each value. And that is fine. That is fine. You have multiple versions, and every version of the SQL with a different value, it has the potential to produce a different execution plan. And that is exactly what you want. So to me, this is the right approach. But it requires to rewrite your application. So are you talking about pure only about equalities or also ranges? Also ranges. Also, well, ranges are, are a little bit different because equalities are very sensitive to histograms. Ranges are, no, are not that sensitive to, to histograms, but um, I would do the same for both, I mean, for ranges and equalities. Right. So, so, so currently, before ACS, if I use a range uh, with binds, do I get binds peaking? Yes. So let's say my first query, um, the range is 1% uh, of the data, and on later queries, the range is 50% of the data. Wouldn't I see the same problem, even with this? Even with this? With this, not really. You apply this one, and you're using literals. Imagine that your predicate says column greater than bind, like the one that we have here. Imagine that it's something like this. If the number of listing values on the column is a small number, less than 254, I will go with this way. Anyone here? Use needles and collect histograms. So that means for that for that one SQL, I will have multiple versions of the SQL and potentially multiple execution plans. And that is what I want. So this this technique would apply to ranges and equality predicates. <laughs> and it has no dependencies on ACS. I'm still trying to understand. Let's imagine that I have a table with millions of rows and thousands of values not skewed. Um, if I say day equals yesterday, that's a small amount of data, and that might be an index pickup, or you know, day, day greater than 24 hours from now. If I say date anywhere in the last year, that might get most of the table and want to do a full table scan, even without skew. Yes, you will. You still have an issue with the, with the, when because you are not here. In that case, what you are saying is, I am either here or here. The other issue still persists. Okay. Yes. yes. Now, in 11G, we have this ACS that to me is like the second best. The best would be to rewrite application, and we mitigate this as much as we can. The second best is to use ACS on 11G, which is trying to have that, that the happy medium between the share and not share. When I say it attempts this happy medium, it's because like every technology is not perfect. It has some, some limitations. It cannot give you absolutely the best of both. It's going to get closer to give you the best of both. Which basically means you will be able to generate multiple optimal plans for a, for a single SQL. On 10G, we don't have this. Multiple plans for a given SQL at the same time. So that means in memory, with 11G, we can have for the same SQL Plan A and Plan B, and both are optimal. For, for different predicates, both are optimal. <coughs> is, is that clear? Any questions here? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the, uh, if the number of the same values is large, <coughs> do you use spam variable? Would that still be a problem? Yes, it's, it's, it's still a problem. This one is not perfect, but it takes you closer to the way I mean, we can get the best of both, share not sharing. Because if we want to, to take control of, of the, the case where we have the range predicate and things like that, of course we will do better with literal, but then if we just put a literal there, we're going to be back to this one here to never share. So that means we will have to pay these two prices. <coughs> so keep in mind, we're trying to get something in between these two. That is going to give you the best here and the best here. There is no no perfect answer. The best you can do is to get close, to get these two benefits and this benefit close. And that close is by using this technique here. Or second best is to use ACS. So what is this ACS? Keep in mind, ACS is trying to give you the best of both uh, by 
allowing you to, move, to generate multiple execution plans for the same SQL. Okay, on, on ACS we have a couple of concepts. If you understand these concepts, you understand ACS. Otherwise, it's going to be totally confusing. The first concept, bind sensitive. It's, it's very, the first one is simple, the second one is not that simple. Bind sensitive. Well, if your SQL contains a bind variable, like in, in, in what? I want to show you some predicates. Well, if it contains a bind variable, if your predicate is equality or not equality, meaning equal or not equal, and you have a histogram, that makes your SQL bind sensitive. Or if it contains any of these range predicates, regardless if you have a histogram or not, it also becomes bind sensitive. Is that clear? Any of those two will make your SQL bind sensitive. That should be pretty straightforward, right? Uh, bind sensitive, the only thing that it means, it, that means it's a candidate for ACS. Why? You don't want every single SQL to be a candidate for ACS because ACS is going to be expensive. It's going to consume a lot of resources. So you don't want to evaluate every single SQL. So you have to say, not every SQL is going to be considered. I'm going to consider only those SQLs that satisfy one of these two. One of the two, doesn't matter, but it has to satisfy one of those two. Now, when the SQL is flat as bind sensitive, then it's being watched, automatically being watched. ACS is monitoring that SQL. Is, is that clear? That means we're going to consume resources monitoring that SQL. And when we say monitoring that SQL, what do we mean? We're going to monitor the number of rows processed by the SQL. Number of rows process is not the same as number of rows return. Number of rows process, imagine that you look at the execution plan and you look at the actual number of rows of every single operation of the execution plan. That column is the number of rows process. If I, if I monitor the SQL and I look at the number of rows processes, around one million rows process in all the operations, and I do an aggregate, and I keep monitoring and I keep watching about the same number, 900,000, uh, 2 million, in that range, about the same number, then the SQL will not be buying aware. So it, it won't be promoted to the next step. We just monitor for some time. We see that it's consistent, the number of rows we process. We don't care. We don't produce a different plan. We just keep one plan. Is that clear? Now, if we notice the number of rows processed is changing over time, sometimes we process 1 million rows and sometimes we process 10 rows, that is a red flag. We say this SQL is a good candidate to produce multiple execution plans, therefore it becomes bind aware. Is that clear? It's two steps. The first step is just to say when do we want to monitor? It satisfies one of those two conditions that are very straightforward, it's like Boolean. Do you comply with one of these two? If the answer is yes, you satisfy one of these two, then it becomes bind sensitive. This is the one that takes longer. Okay? Now, what happens when it becomes bind aware? So we're, we're saying, okay, now we notice, we notice uh, this SQL is changing over time. Sometimes it processes a few rows, sometimes it processes many rows. How do we manage that? How do we determine? Because in order to do that, we need to establish like a, a small data model to support this monitoring, right? This data model is implemented with three buckets. We say, we're gonna take three buckets which has nothing to do with histogram buckets. And these buckets are ACS buckets. So those are three candidates. So every time you execute this SQL, which is bind sensitive, I'm gonna check if the number of rows process is from zero to 1,000, or it is between 1,000 and 1 million, or if it is more than 1 million. Depending what is the answer, if it is on the small set, medium set, or large set, I'm going to increase this count. This count is say, oh, I executed and it, it produced 3,000 rows. If it produces 3,000 rows, or if it access 3,000 rows, which bucket should I increment? Okay, the first bucket. The first bucket is bucket zero. 
if, if it process, let's say, 5 million rows, which bucket should I increase? Bucket 2, which is the third bucket. Is that clear? Now, when I'm doing this buckets increase, I have two simple rules. Two simple rules. If I get to see two buckets different than zero, they reach the same size, then my SQL is, is buying aware, meaning from that moment on, <coughs> I will split my execution plans and will have multiple execution plans. That is one option. The other option is when I get to increase the three buckets. It doesn't matter if it has a count of one or if it has a count of 1,000. It doesn't matter. As soon as I put something in the three buckets, I also turn this flag and it becomes final web. Is, is that clear? Yes? No? Um, as as long as the bucket increases, then the it checks whether the value is increased in bucket 0, 1, 2, and all things are increased, then you increase, you, you select the final web. When the three of them, they have a value other than zero, they begin with zero. When, when, I, when so I have a value distinct than zero in the three of them, that is one way to become minor aware. The other, the other way is, it doesn't matter if one is zero, but if in the other two, they reach the same value, then it becomes minor aware. For example, imagine I increment the first bucket and I say one, I say it again, increment two, I say it again, increment three. Well, one of these two has to reach three. Is, is that clear? Those are the two cases. The two cases that I have discovered so far. I mean, we have the three buckets, different sizes. So it's going to be combined and where when either one of these two happens. Well, there's one, one more here, which is when we use this hint. Well, forget about the hint for the moment. When, when we have a count on a given bucket, and there's another bucket that reaches the same value, then it becomes final web. Or the three buckets, they have a value this than zero, it becomes final web. One of those two conditions. Is that clear? Very clear. Okay, because we will, we will see this, and I'm really going to ask you what, what do you think? When is going to come and become final web? Yeah, go ahead. Bucket zero is up to 1,000 rows process. You said the count will increase Okay, you execute the SQL for the first time, the three buckets, they have a value of zero. When you execute the SQL for the first time, if you look at the execution, the execution plan, if you look at the, the column that says actual row, you aggregate that column. That number is the number of rows processed. If the number of row process is less than 1,000, you increase bucket zero, which is the first bucket. So the count becomes one, and the other two are still zero, zero. You execute the second time, and let's say the second time, the number of row process is, let's say, 50,000. So that means that will be the second bucket, which is bucket one. So now you have one, one, zero. When that happens, these two, they have a value one. At that time, your SQL become final aware. So that means the next execution is going to start splitting plans. You want to say, okay, the third execution, now I'm going to start creating multiple plans for my SQL. When that is the case, when I say, now I am final aware, I'm going to start creating multiple plans, how do I control those multiple plans? That is controlled by something that is called selectivity profile. Selectivity profile, now I have to keep track of what is selectivity of the predicates that can be, can be, have, have been seen to produce plan A or plan B. It's confusing, yes, I will show you with the demo, after the demo, I am pretty sure, 900% sure that you will understand it fully, okay? <coughs> but we have to do the demo. So for a very large database, so open a, hmm? for a very large database, so you can query always That is correct. That is correct. We're going to get there. What are the limitations of ACS? Because ACS will have some limitations, and that's one of the limitations. So let's delay that. I mean, where, where ACS won't work, we will talk about that in a moment. Okay, so what is a selectivity profile? Selectivity profile is going to regulate those plans. You're going to say, okay, if I see 
you predicate has a selectivity of 0 0.2, then it may use plan A. If it has a selectivity of 0 0.8, it may use plan B, and so on. That is the selectivity profile. So every time we execute the SQL, we have a, a soft parts, which you're gonna check for this particular set of values, what is the selectivity that I have, and if it matches one plan that I already know. If, if I find a match, I use that plan. If I don't find a match, then I do a hard part, come out with a plan. If that plan is a new plan, okay, it's all a new plan with a new selectivity profile. If that plan already exists, then I modify an existing plan and I increment the selectivity profile. Is, is that clear? So how does it really work? Well, it has like three steps here. ACS monitoring is going to happen when we have predicates of this type or predicates of this type. In this case, we require a histogram. In this case, we don't need a histogram. It doesn't matter. And they will go from monitoring to full ACS. In other words, they will go from binary sensitivity to binary where when we are checking the number of rows, uh, sorry, the number of rows on the multiple uh, sources on the execution plan, and we notice there is a significant variance. And this is done by by the, the buckets. If that happens, it becomes mine aware. And when it is mine aware, then we use a selectivity profile to determine if we use plan A, plan B, or plan C. Is, is that clear? So there, these are like three stages. In one of those stages, we have this data model. On B dollar SQL, we have those, those columns. Then we have these three views. We have histograms, which again, this have nothing to do with CBO histograms. These are ACS histograms. We have a selectivity profile, and we store TSOM statistics, which, again, nothing with CBO statistics. These are course of shared statistics. Now, this is where everything should make sense, and, and uh, once I do the demo, you should be totally clear. So if right now it's not totally clear, that's okay. But after the demo, it should, it should be. Let's talk about this example. I have this sequence. If I look at the SQL, I'm selecting from one table, I have two filtered predicates with the quality, and I have a bind. In order for this SQL to be bind sensitive, what do I need to have? Histogram. 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 Yes, I do have histograms. I collect statistics on this table, P1, and I do have histograms, and this, these are my buckets. I have a column C2, which is one here. These are the different values. And these are the number of rows, and I notice there is a, uh, a standard distribution here. We have some, some values with one row and some values with many rows. Is that clear? And these two are very similar in data distribution. It is okay, it doesn't matter. Now keep in mind this column two, column three, and we have indexes for all three columns. I have an index here, index here, index here. Single column index. Fine. Now let's, let's understand this one. This is the name of a script. On the script bb one I'm passing here, on this bind variable, I'm passing the value zero, and in this bind variable, I'm passing the value n. In other words, I'm passing this value and this value, okay? So that means, that means the selectivity <coughs> for the first predicate, the selectivity of this one is gonna be this number. I have one million rows. So when I take this value and divide it over one million, I get this value, which is very easy to see. Is that clear? Mm -hmm. So that means with the first with the first script passing these two values, this is the selectivity of the first predicate and this is the selectivity of the second predicate. In that case, even though I have indexes, what would you expect? Full table scan or you were expecting an index scan? Full table scan. Full table scan, right? Everybody agrees that we have a full table scan here? Yes? Yeah, sure. Anybody thinks that we shouldn't have a full table scan? No, we have an agreement, right? So we are DBAs here where we, we see that we are reading like 38% of the data, 38% of the data. It doesn't matter which index I, I may want to take, I'd rather do a full table scan. So far so good? Mm -hmm. What happens with the second set? I have five and I have eight. Five, N. Index on? 
Column two. Everybody agree with that? We don't need a CV, no? So we can figure this out, right? What happened with the next one? Index on this one here, right? Why? Because we have a very good selectivity here, 38%. Of course, the CBL is going to say, you know what, I will go with, the, with an index on column 3. So far? What, what with the next one? We're saying 3M. Look at these values. Look at the selectivity. Index here. What about this one here? Index here. What about the next one? Index on, on what? On both. Yes, index on both. We can we can use both indices, right? So why not? Let's, let's use both indices. What about the next one? Index here, this one, index here, this one, index here. Right? So it's like we may have full table scan, we may access through through this one here, we may go through this one here, or we may go through both indices. We have four possibilities, four, four possible execution plans. So far, so good? Okay. So uh, we were figuring this out. Like, the first one was obvious. The second one is also obvious. The only one that is kind of a, we may have some question is this one here, BD6. Let me do this demo here so I can show you how we measure this. So I'm, I'm going to do the last here. You don't have to do the last. Let me, let me do the last here. This is before ACS. We have no ACS yet. So we did a setup, and it says let's let's complete this one first using common sense, which we did, and second, let's test. In order to test, we're going to be using a couple of a script here that says flush, and then the name of the script flush, the name of the script. So it's very simple. So I will open my SQL plus. Here, I'm gonna say BB1, which is the first script, and what do I see? I don't see anything, so let me just flush and do BB1. No selected. need to connect on the right user. So I close the share pool and then I do BB1. I have to show you what is this script. But first I'm going to show you is doing a full scan. Okay? As expected. I mean we said before that here this BB1 should be a full table scan and we saw a full table scan. But let me just show you all those scripts. When I do BB1 here, which is this one here, it's just executing this BB. What is that BB? So let me open that up. This one is just say, execute these two, column and ID. So let me just go and show you those two. Column just defines some columns. And this ID is just finding, finding a, the SQL ID that was last executed. So that was this uh, BB, and this BB is, is called from this one here, that was this part. And then it assigned the values of those two binds, declare and assign, and then executes Q1. What is this Q1? That is the first query, and it's going to be the same query every time. That query is this one here, the one I show you. Okay? And after I do that SQL, it's going to run ID again to get the SQL ID, and then it's going to show you execution plan and CS. What is that plan and what is that CS? So if I show you the plan script, the plan script is going to use DBMS display cursor, passing the SQL ID, and it's going to include, on the execution plan, it's going to include the child number. So the first column is going to be the child number, and then it's going to show you the execution plan. It's just a small trick to show you this one here. This zero means child zero. And then what you see here, this is the execution plan for child zero. After it shows the execution plan for child zero, it's going to show the execution plan for the child course that was used. This child number that you see there is coming from this ID, which is selecting the child number. From, the, from where? 
from the last execution. <coughs> so it's saying, what is, it, what is the last SQL ID and the last child number? And that is the one that we select. Why? Because it's possible that in memory, we will have multiple execution plans. I want to show you all of them, and then I want to show you the one that we actually executed. Because if we have three plans, I need to show you which one we executed. And that's what we do here. It shows you first all the plans that we have, and then it's going to show you whatever was executed. When we have only one plan, it's going to be the same. This child zero, which is plan two to one, which is the full scan, is going to be the same as the one that was executed because we only have one. So far, so good. And then the last part that it's doing is it executes this this CS, and this CS is going to select from middle or SQL. It's going to show me bind sensitive, bind aware, is shareable. It's going to show me the plan hash value, the child number, the number of executions, and what forget. Then from CS histogram, it's going to show me the three buckets for this SQL. And uh, then from a selectivity profile, it shows me whatever it finds for that SQL. And then from CS statistics, the same thing, show me whatever it finds for that SQL. That, that's, that's all it does. So when we run the first time, execute the SQL, show me the execution plan, full table scan, full table scan. When it comes to B$ SQL here, it's going to say, okay, child zero it has only one execution. I, I get the number of offer gets. Is bind sensitive? Yes, yes, because I have a bind and I have, I have a histogram. Is bind aware? The answer is no. Is shareable? Yes. Plan has value? Two to one. Fine. My histogram here, look at the buckets. What do you see here? It has zero, one, zero. Why is it zero, one, zero? Why do I have this one here? Let's look at the number of rows. On actual rows, <coughs> look at this number that we have. Hmm? It's between a thousand and a million. Yes. Therefore, it increases this bucket. Not the first one, not the last one, but bucket number one. Selectivity a profile is come with no rows. These statistics are just telling me child zero, which is this this plan, sorry. This is a has value for the binds. We don't use that. A peak, yes, we use bind picking. One execution, about this many rows. And this number is large, so that means it's the second bucket and not the third bucket, not the third bucket. And that, that was it. Now, if I flush here, and I execute BB2, remember what was BB2? BB2 is this one here. Look at these numbers. This one should be index two, right? That's what we said. So when I do that, if I look at the execution plan, sure enough, I can see my index two, right? Keep in mind, I'm not using ACS yet, so between one and the, no and the next, I do a flush of the shell pool. If I do BB6, remember BB6, what we have here? BB6 is the one that, that is, is using both indexes, right? Remember this? If I execute this one, Sure enough, I see the two indexes. So I can predict for any of those 10 that we have there, from nine, from one to nine, we can predict what is that we're expecting. So far, so good? Now let's, let's introduce ACS. What is gonna happen with ACS? So on this demo, now that you understand how it works, let's focus on the first demo. The first demo says, I'm going to flush the share pool. After I close the share pool, I'm going to execute BB1. So what is going to be the execution plan? Full table scan. I don't flush this time. Next, I execute BB2. Hmm? It's going to be full table scan, but I would like to see in the range scan. Right? If I execute BB2 isolated, it would be in the range scan. But now that it's ACS is active, the first one is going to be full table scan, this one here. The second is going to be full table scan. What is going to happen the third one? ACS kicks in, and now the third one should be in the range scan. And what about the last one? Full table scan. So what we're expecting to see is the first one, full table scan, 
The second, we wish it were an index, but it will be a full table scan. The next one here should be an internet scan. And the last one should be a full table scan. How many child courses <coughs> you're expecting to see? Two. Okay. You're gonna get some surprises here. So so this demo, this demo is, is this demo here. Let me just show you this demo one. This demo one is, is doing the flush. Disregard this one, this one. These are for, for Aidan Lua. It doesn't matter. Just disregard those two. I have BB1, BB2, BB2, BB1, right? And I have a spool file. So when I when I do the demo, it will show on the screen very fast, but I, then I will show you on the spool file. So I do demo one. Basis, sorry? It's by default. ACS is active by default. There are some parameters that control ACS, but it's enabled by default. So it finished, it created some files. So I come here, and this file, the output is, is this spool file. So let's review the spool file. So the first thing I did, I ran BB1, right? So le let me scroll down and find the execution plan. Execution plan, we have child course or zero, only one, and we see full table scan, which is what we were expecting, right? Uh, this part here about B.SQL and all these B.SQL CS, we already saw them. We already saw that we were increasing the first bucket. So nothing, nothing is new here. Everything is the same. Now, what happens when we execute DB2? When we execute DB2, <coughs> let's, let's see what's going on. We, we set up the values. We execute DB2. And we get the SQL ID. Look at this one here. In terms of execution plans, we only have one execution plan which is child zero, which is full table scan. Fine, we're, we're, we're in the process of warming up ACS. So we knew that for this execution, we will use full table scan. Even though we wanted indirect scan, it will use full table scan. So we see that, that the execution plan that was actually used was full table scan. Uh, this portion here, about the Dora SQL, now it says is mine aware? No, it's not mine aware yet. It will become mine aware the next one, the next execution. So look at the buckets here. What do you find here? Equal, Equal count, these two. So this is the keyword here. When you have this one one, the next execution is going to be mine aware. Therefore, it's going to split the execution plans. Is that clear? So we see that here, selectivity profile, no rows yet. Nothing is, it's, it's just, this one is going to kick in the next execution. Nothing changes here. Now, when we do DB2 for the second time, so basically we're talking about this one here, so we're here, now we want to see it in the range scan. We're doing this for the second time. Scroll down. Now look at this one here, one. What happened to child zero? That plan disappeared. Child zero is, is gone. Why? This part, when, when we display the execution plan here, which is this one here, we're saying when shareable equals yes. So cursor zero becomes non-shareable. We cannot share that anymore. Once we switch to ACS, we basically, we don't share whatever we had before. We start fresh. So let's continue checking this one. We, we saw child one and is doing in the range scan. Okay? That was the plan that was executed. Fine. B dollar SQL. Now we have two rows, right? Child zero. But when we look at the column that says bind is shareable, child zero is not shareable. Well, shard one is shareable. And we have a different execution plan. Two to one is the one with the full table scan. Nine by eight is the one with the internet scan. Okay? So now we have two child courses. One of them is not shareable. The other one is shareable. When I look at the histogram here, what do you notice here? How do you read this part? You had seen this before, right? Child zero was one one zero. 
So what happens is, try zero, we, we say this is not shareable anymore. We cannot go ahead and modify that. But now we can modify child one, and we need to start from scratch. We start with one zero zero. But now from this moment on, it doesn't matter what we have here, because the switch is on. Bind aware is already active. So it really doesn't matter what is the content of this histogram because bind aware is already, and the SQL is already bind aware. Okay? Now what we notice that is going to be different is this selectivity that we have here. Let's see if you can make sense of this part. This is selectivity profile. Try to make sense of this one and tell me what you see. That means if the next time I part this equal, if if the bind that says equal B2, the selectivity of the value that I pass is within this range between 0 0.00003 and 0 0.0044 plus this other bind has a selectivity within this range. If the answer is yes for both, then I can use the same plan. If the answer is no, then I have to hard parts. Is, is that clear? Remember those values. Uh, look at this B2 and B3. Let me show you this B2 and B3. Look at this value. And look at this value. Okay? What you see here is a range that includes those two values. That means if I re-execute another SQL that may have different values of the bands, but if the selectivity that I pass for those predicates is within those two ranges, I can use the same execution plan. Is that clear? Yeah. Then what happens next? This one about the totals, I noticed the number of rows was large, the number of rows now is small. Actually, if I look at the execution plan and I look at the actual rows, <coughs> the actual rows is very small. Okay? Therefore, I am on bucket zero. But, but that doesn't matter anymore because once it's mine aware, it's mine aware. So I, do, I don't care about the buckets anymore. Now I do care about the selectivity profile. Now what happens when I execute the SQL one more time, passing BB1? Remember BB1 was the one for the full table scan. Remember that? Yeah. So what happens in that case? Now look at this value here. I have child one. Now I have child two and child two as a full table scan. Okay? So right now I should have child zero, child one, child two. And I use a full table scan. I can see here my three child cursors. But in terms of shareable, the first one is non shareable. The second and the third, they are shareable. When I look here, my buckets, now I increase child 2. It doesn't matter what I have here, I go ahead and create child 2, and it has 0, 1, 0, which is very similar to what I had at the beginning. At the beginning, this is the one I implemented. And what do I see on my selectivity profile? Look at this one here. This is child 1, this is child 2. Child 2 is going to say, if you, your selectivity profile is between this value and this value for B2 and between this value and this value for bind 3, then you use the child. Is, is that clear? And keep in mind, those values include this range that I have here. At this point, you should have a very good idea how it works. Is that, is that a true statement? Good. Now let me confuse you a little bit here. <laughs> Look at the next demo. The, ne the next demo is going to say the following. I'm going to flow the share pool. Then I do DB1. What do I expect from DB1? Full <coughs> scan. What do you expect from the second one here? Full table scan. What is going to happen here? <coughs> full scan. We're expecting full scan. What is going to happen here? Who says index? Who says full scan? We have more full scans. We're going to do a full scan. Why are we going to do a full table scan? Yes. Yes. You do one full table scan, 
you increase one bucket. Do another filter scan, you increase the same bucket. So now your buckets are gonna say something like zero, two, zero. Then you do the, the BB2, the buckets are gonna say one, two, zero. <coughs> Binary one is not yet. The next one here, this, this second BB2, it becomes two, two, <coughs> zero. Then the next one is binary. So the next one, when you do this BB2, what do you expect to see? Yes. Index. And the last one, BB1, what do you expect to see? Full table scan. How many child courses? Three. The same as we did before. The first one, child zero, should be uh, non-shareable. And the other two should be shareable. Is, is that clear? Let's, let's do it and verify that. So I'm going here and I'm going to say, you know what, let's do demo two. Remember what we are saying, <laughs> index full scan. Is that clear? Let's check it out. That is demo two. Full scan, that is the first one. Second one, full scan. So far, nothing unexpected. After I'm going to show you the buckets, the bucket will have the zero to zero. The next one, we should see full table scan, but the bucket should be one to zero. Full table scan is here. Buckets, one to zero. Next one, we should see also full table scan. Now the bucket should be two to zero. Two to zero. Okay, the next one, now the next one is going to be which one? We have done, all the next one is going to be this one here. We should see in this range scan. <coughs> in the range scan. You notice cursor zero is not longer there, so it's not longer shareable. We notice now we have this one, this second, second child, it doesn't matter anymore, the buckets, they don't matter anymore because now it's fine aware. We start with selectivity, selectivity profile, and the last execution should do full table scan. Ah, it's here. Now we have child one and child two. Which one is the one that it used? It used this one here, the full table scan. Remember that on my plan screen that I show all the plans that are shareable, and right now I share with one and two, and then I show you the one that is actually executed, which was the second one, the full table scan. I look at my buckets, I have zero, one, two, and selectivity profile is, is the same as I had before, I had on demo one. Is, is that clear? Yes, no? Okay, so now you understand it better. Let's go ahead and try the next demo. <coughs> What is going to happen on the next demo? So we do full scan, full scan, full scan, what about here? This one? Yes, and it works like that, so you get the idea. So that means, you know that it depends how you warm up ACS, it may <coughs> kick in immediately, or it may take several executions to kick in. Is that clear? Do you want me to execute that, or, or should I execute that one? Yes. What about the next one? Full scan. Full scan. Hmm? What was with that BB4? Remember that BB4? BB4, it was very selective on this index. So what we're saying here, we should see, we should see, Full scan, full scan, full scan, yes or no? Okay, who says index? Why, why index? Okay, it's more important, what the, what the key here is, when do we have these buckets reach one to the next? When we do the first one, what is the state of our pockets? It's going to be zero, one, zero. When we execute this one, what is the state of the pockets? One, one, zero. So that, the, that means the next one, regardless what it is, is going to be binary. So it's going to recompute the plan. 
And if it is selective, VB4 is selective on an index, it will show the index. Is that clear? What about the next one, VB7? Remember VB7 what it was? No, the index, the, the two index that was VB6. So I don't remember what was seven. Seven was very selective on this same index. So it should use also index, right? So we're saying we should see full scan, full scan, index, 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 full scan. Do we do this? Should I demo this? This is demo four. <coughs> Let's go one by one, check in. We're saying, let's, the first thing, we're saying we are expecting to see full scan, full scan index. <coughs> full scan. Full scan. <coughs> so far we have the one one, so it becomes binary word. When we execute BB4, we're expecting to see index. Sure enough, we have an index. And it becomes child 1, child 0, it gets a non shareable. So after that, what, what, did, what did we say? It should be index, index, full scan, right? index for its child 2, child 2. So what happened here is using index, which is correct, is what we were expecting. But one thing that we were not expecting is it going from child 1 to child 2. Okay? I will explain why. So if we look here, is shareable? No. Is shareable? No. The only one that is shareable is the third one. So it, it, it made the second child, which was the correct one, it made it non shareable. Can anybody tell me why? Why that? Why this one became non shareable and it creates a new, a new child cursor? When this one was created, it was shareable. But when this one was created, it flagged this one as non shareable. Why? The yeah, selectivity profile. Selectivity profile. Because when we ran that, that the one that created this one here, it couldn't find a match on the selectivity profile, so it had parts, created a new execution plan, but guess what? It happened to be one that already existed. So it took the profile from, from, the, from this one here, from this child, it copied the profile and aggregated the new, the new selectivity profile. Let me, let me show you. Let me show you what, what, why, why, why I say so. Look at this child one and child two, and let me show you selectivity profile. When we had child one, this was the profile. What you see in the profile. Now that we have child two, guess what? These two lines, they will carry over. The first line, this one, is this line here. And the second line that you see here is this one here, which is the range zero. You notice this says range zero and range zero, and then we have range one, range one. So now our selectivity profile, can you hear me? I don't know if the battery is gone. It's okay? So, so with the selectivity, with the selectivity profile, and there's some battery. Is that better? Yeah. Okay, so, uh, with the new selectivity profile, we, we took the selectivity profile of child 1 and copied it <coughs> over to child 2. Now child 2 contains the two selectivity profiles. Over time, we are going to coalesce these selectivity profiles. If, if we start noticing these, these profiles, they, they begin to, to merge or they have an overlap, we are going to coalesce and then we will have only the, the big range. Is that clear? But every time we have to change the selectivity profile, 
we make the cursor non-shareable and we create a, a new cursor. Is, is that clear? So think on this in terms of a, a overhead. During the warm-up, ACS will have a lot of overhead because every change that we, that we do, I mean, every time that we change the security profile, we have to recreate the cursor as a new child, copy everything over, and make the prior one more shareable. Is, is that clear? Mm -hmm. it's, it's part of the parsing process. Okay. Not necessarily it's part of the CBO, it's part of the parsing process. Okay, so um, I think you got the idea of how it works. I mean, after this example, it should be pretty clear how it works, right? And this portion, it doesn't matter anymore. I mean, it, it continues working the same way, but it doesn't matter anymore because once Bina work, it will, it will continue being binary aware. So the buckets are just to make it binary aware. After it becomes binary aware, what matters is this portion here. Now look at this one here. What, what is this child number three? What do you think is this child number three? It copied over. I mean, when, when we be executed, if we look at the sequence that we have here, we did before seven two they have different selectivities, right? They, they use the same plan, therefore they will have the internet scan. But the, each one of those three, they have different selectivities. Therefore, on the selectivity profile, we should have three ranges. Is that, is that clear? And those are the ranges that we see here. We see range zero, range one, and range two. For each of these, for bind two and for bind three. Make sense? Okay, so you have a very good idea how it works. Now, let's continue here. Look at this other example. This other example is, is based on the same data. We have a select on T1, and we only have one predicate, C2, and than, than this bind. And we only have these four scripts. We script 21, 22, 23, 24. We pass different values on this V2. We pass the value 4, 3, 2, 1. If we want to compute the cardinality, we just need to look here at the histogram. When we're passing a value of 4, that means C2 greater than 4. C2 greater than 4, that basically means 5. 5 has a cardinality of 4, that is this 4 here. When we say greater than 3, this one here, this 3, that means 231 plus 4, which is 235, and that is selectivity, and so on. If you notice know selectivity goes from 0.0004 up to 0.06%. The first one, you, we should have an index range scan. The second one, we should have a what? In the range scan. The third one, index. And the last one, is getting close. So that that be before we can we can test isolated. We can say flush. And then we zoom, we do BB24. And what we get is full table scan. So we know this, this test is simple. 21, 22, 23, they should be indexed and right? scan. 24 is full table scan. If we are not sure about 23, we can flush the share pool and do 23. And we're expecting to see index range right? scan, which is fine, right? So we, we already proved here that we will have index, 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 and full table scan. Keep that in mind. Only 24 is full table scan. That part is done. Fine. Now we're doing those, those labs that we have here. So I'm going to jump into those labs. That is done. Done. Now, this is the part that becomes a little bit tricky here. But now that you understand how it works, you may get this right. May. Look at the first at the first set. If I flush the share pool, if I do BB21, what do you expect to see? Index. Here? Index. This one? Index. This one? Index. Right? Here the question is, what is the end result? What happened on the last one? So you are saying that we're expecting to see index, 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 right? So I'm going to do lab 05A, 
which lab 05A, which is doing those same steps. And let's look at the last one. Full table scan. Why is he doing a full table scan on the last one? We were expecting to see an index. Hmm? No, range, it, it doesn't matter, it should work the same way. But uh, we're saying, we were expecting to see index, 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 and then index, right? But we see a full table scan. So what do you think happened differently here? Because something is different, right? The bucket. Hmm? The bucket comes. The buckets, yes, the buckets. When we start here, the first one, intervention scan, our bucket should be like what? One zero zero, right? When we look at the bucket, it says one zero zero. What happened to the next one? The next one is also doing intervention scan. Let's look at the buckets. One one zero. Why does it say one one zero? Actual number of rows, yes. When we look at the actual number of rows, the actual number of rows is more than 1,000, therefore it increases the second bucket. So keep that in mind. It's not that it's using index, index, index. What it really matters is how many rows we process. Is that clear? This one, the first one is less than 1,000. This one is more than 1,000. If I go back to the first one, the first one is less than a thousand. It's the aggregate of the rows. The aggregate. Okay? So that means that means the first one that we executed here, this BB21, it was less than a thousand. The second one was more than a thousand. Therefore, it increases the second bucket. Therefore, from that moment on, the next one will be by an hour, no matter what. But I don't see more than a thousand rows there. It's close, but not quite. Is it looking at something else? Say it again. Go back down. To the five here. Yeah, back down to the second one. So I see 235 times four, which is not quite a thousand. That is a good point. That's a good point. I didn't mention this before. Is this column times two? Times two. I know it's tricky, let me show you. <laughs> let me show you here. That value is in this column that we see here. That is coming from, from CS statistics. Well, let me see if I can show you. 5,000, this is not 5. Let me go all the way up. On the first plan, we see these actual rows here, and we see 1, 1, 4, 4, 4, which is like what, like 12, 15, and like, like for a, 14, right? Let me show you that uh, from selectivity, from CS statistics. Look at this value here, 34. So this value is, is double what you see on the execution plan. Why is double? I already asked that, that question to Maria Colgan, which is the head of the optimizer team. She said, well, this number is, is, is not necessarily what you see there. When, when I did reverse engineering this one, I noticed it's double double the value, which is fine. Just keep in mind that the whole idea here is a small number of rows, bigger number of rows, and large number of rows. Okay? So when you're looking at the actual rows, just take that column, aggregate the entire column, multiply by two, and that is the zero to 1,000, 1,000 to 1 million, and 1 million and higher. 
I don't see any reason why the tool is there or why it shouldn't be there. I don't have a case to say it's wrong. Okay? It's just the way it works. Isn't that representing the actual rose process or the actual rose return? It's rose process. Okay, so that one was tricky because we, we were assuming that we, because we saw index, 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 it should continue with index. So now let's try to, to figure out what is the next one. The next one says 24, and then we have 23, 22, 21. So what do you expect to see? On the last one, what do you expect to see on the last one? Index. Index. Let's, let's go ahead and do that. <coughs> With your scan. Hmm? The last one was full table scan. Why was it a full table scan? The first equal covers all the selectivities. Let's look at again this one here. We were doing 24, which was large number, right? 23, it was still a large number, but it was using an index, but it was a large number, meaning more than more than a thousand. Okay? More than a thousand and then a small number. So you can see that from these buckets, not that one, the 26, 20, uh, this one here. At the end, look at these buckets. One, three, zero. Guess which bucket is the one that we are warming up? Let's just look at the buckets. We warm up this bucket here, okay? Yes? It, it doesn't matter if it was index or full scan. It doesn't matter. It's warming up the medium, the, the bucket that is at the center. And then we increase the same bucket, even though the plan that we wanted here was, was an indirect scan, the desired plan, we increase the same bucket. Now it's zero to zero. So that means we have to, to reach two to zero in order to kick in. What is happening to the next one, it may go like one to zero, maybe. Or oh, it's actually zero, three, zero, still, still far away. So on the last one, we get the bucket says 130, but, but ACS never warm up. Is it that clear? So all of them through the full table scan, the four, the four executions. So that was this one here, right? So what is going to happen with the other two? What is going to happen with this one here? It's, it, this one is index. Four. Index should be index. And this one here should be index. Yeah, you we I'm expecting this one to be index, index, index. Yeah, it worked fine. And again, if we want to see the details, we have to look at the pockets to see how they were increased. There was a match here, 110. Okay? And then what about the last one? We're expecting to see index, 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 and multiple scan. 
But what we're expecting, let's, let's check it out. That is D. You know that even with a small SQL, it's hard to predict when ACS is going to be activated and when it's not going to be activated. So what, we, what did we get on the last one? We get full table scan, and it was activated. We noticed it was activated because we see the selectivity. When you see selectivity profile, that means it was activated. Okay? So now you've got an idea how it works. So let's just wrap up here. So there are some pros and cons of, of ACS and some consequences. Keep in mind ACS, the, the whole objective of ACS is to generate multiple execution plans for the same SQL. That is the idea. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yes, let me get let me get there. Okay, so we know I mean ACS it has this objective uh, to create multiple and optimal plans, but there is an implicit overhead. I mean when we do this, we have an overhead. We know it's the overhead. We create the chart course, we create all the chart course, we, we make it non shareable. That is very heavy. We don't want to do this with every single SQL because it will consume a lot of resources to do this. So we need to limit those, those uh, overhead, I mean, the overhead that we notice. How do we do that? First, we don't do this for every single SQL. We do it only with a subset of the SQLs. That's one step. The other is we limit the monitoring time. We, we, if we notice the SQL is bind sensitive, we monitor the SQL sometime. After some executions, we don't monitor anymore. Okay? Because if after some executions, it hasn't gone from bind sensitive to bind aware, we say, you know what, forget about this SQL. We don't monitor this anymore. Those are basically shortcuts to stop the overhead. Then the idea is if we have multiple execution plans, we should have better performance. That is true most of the times. What happens if we have a regression? It's possible that one of those plans is going to be a bad plan. It's possible. Hopefully, it doesn't happen often, but it's possible. Now, having many cursors is a non-issue, and it's, it's basically fixed, and then it's, it's been taken care of through some bugs to try to reduce the number of child cursors that we produce. At the beginning, this was an issue. I mean, meaning 11, 11 or 1. I mean, the, the first release of 11, that was an issue. And ACS is really going to help you when you have SQLs which they take long to execute and, and you execute the same SQL with, this, with binds and those binds, they match um, values with very different selectivities. In those cases, ACS is very helpful. There are some parameters to disable ACS. I'm not saying we should go ahead and disable ACS. By, by default, it's enabled. <coughs> if we want to disable ACS for some reason, we use these two parameters. And we have some conclusions. It allows, ACS allows to generate multiple plans non-persistent. Non-persistent, what does it mean? ACS is learning, right? Every time we execute the SQL, we have the profile, the selectivity profile, we have these buckets, everything is learning, or everything is in memory. So that means we flush the shell pool, we bring the system down, or whatever, we lose everything. ACS is gone. We have to relearn every time. Is, is that clear? So it's non-persistent. ACS. All those plans that we see, they are not created right away. They're not created on the first execution. They, they are created after several executions, as we saw. Okay? Keep that in mind. If you only have a couple of executions of a SQL statement, ACS won't help. ACS only helps you if the SQL is executed many times. We may have some other predicates, which we don't have. Right now, we only care about this, this predicate that you see here, if you may have a performance issue and you can pinpoint the performance issue is due to ACS, I have ne never seen one, but it's possible. You may see one, then you can disable ACS as a workaround, okay? So that, just keep that in mind. There are some references there. The demo, I'm going to delay SQL key demos until we cover SQL key tomorrow, SQL, SQL key is clean. So the demo, forget about the demo. So some, some uh, closing remarks about um, ACS. Can we enhance ACS? 
Well, as you know, ACS has some limitations. One of the limitations is the number of buckets, the way I see it. Another limitation is, is the warm-up of these buckets, which is linear. Which, in my opinion, it shouldn't be linear. It should be more like logarithmic. I already opened a hammer request asking for those two changes. To change the algorithm to not be linear, but being, being algorithmic, <coughs> meaning if one bucket has a value of 8, a second bucket, if it reaches the value of 3, which I mean 2 to the 3 is 8, at that time it, it should kick in, in my opinion. Instead of being 8, 8, it should be like 8, 3. And the other one is instead of having three buckets, I, I think we should have at least five buckets. Mm -hmm. So instead of being like, like three orders of magnitude between one bucket and the next, to me, it should be like two orders of magnitude. Zero to 100, 100 to 10,000, 10,000 to 1 million, and so on. Okay? Now, when we have this critical sequel, I mean, the sequel statement is, is, is important to us. We don't want to depend on ACS because you notice ACS, it looks like a little bit random. Depending on the sequence in which you pass the binds, it may start or may not start. Is that clear? We can force it. We can say, don't do all this, this mechanism to be bind aware and push the SQL to be bind aware from the beginning. How do we do that? With a hint. Is that clear? So a hint on the SQL that says bind aware, so we bypass all this algorithm and we make it bind aware from the beginning. Now the question is, can we modify the SQL? If we cannot modify the SQL, we can put the binary word as a hint on a SQL profile or a SQL plan baseline. Okay? Any questions regarding ACS? Question. Question. So there's three buckets, and they're always defined by the first one is thousand and the second one is thousand, between thousand and a million. Yes. And third one is over a million. Okay. It's not the size of the table, but it's the actual rows processed by all the operations and execution plan. You only have one table. Yes, you're right. We always we will we, 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 we be the array of the actual rows, which is the actual rows process on each step. Okay. Okay. So is it No, I wouldn't do that. I, uh, the way I see SES is for critical SQL, but, but every SQL, it would be too expensive. I mean, to force, I mean, having a ACS for every single SQL is too much. It's, it will overdo the, this. I mean, I, I'd rather do it only for specific SQL statements. Okay? Okay, let's, if there are no more questions, let's take a quick break. We have one more topic to cover today, which is SQL management. <coughs>